two leading biodiversity scientists joined Wild Ark on a discovery mission into the Nakanai mountain range on the island of New Britain, Papua New Guinea. The objective was to map the biodiversity and help the local people of 2K understand their region from an ecological perspective. I had the good opportunity in 1985 to go to the Southern Highlands, my first trip to New Guinea. This is my fourth trip to New Guinea with a 30 year hiatus. <laughs> Oh, the first thing that was surprising was getting here alive after the two-day walk. It was a great hike, you know, like, I mean, I was really tired. And in many ways, I felt really sad that I was so tired because after a while, you end up looking at your feet and not looking at what's around you, but it was wonderful. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Beautiful. This is a beautiful corner of the world. It is absolutely beautiful. We knew we were only going to be here four days or so, and the idea was just to get a sniff of what the forest was like. 2K has a pretty limited elevation. I don't think it gets much above about 900 metres. What you've got is a tropical rainforest. This is submontane forest, but this is a place where the air is really clear. It's a clean forest, beautiful soil, and you've got these rivers just coming out of the limestone. If you have a look at the water which is coming out of these rivers, it's like kerosene blue. It's absolutely magnificent. The diversity here is, is extreme. I mean, I don't know what it is. I haven't had time to go around and count plants and find out what's brand new and what's not brand new. No, I don't know what that is. I probably should. My botany teacher would be disgusted with me. What you see is a just diversity of greenness everywhere. And you can see it by the gardens that the people are growing. The plants there grow really well, they're healthy, and they're producing sufficient food for quite a population in this area. This one used to uh, make good soup. One of the first things we know, I noticed anyway, we saw the world's largest fern. This is an Angiopteris. It's only a baby. But look how thick that is, hey. Look how thick that is. They get three, four times bigger than this. Just enormous. Magic. In my own personal research, I happen to work on things called ant plants, which are strange epiphytes with cavities inside them where the ants live inside and the, the ants feed the plants and the plant protects the ants. This is what we're looking for. New Guinea is the world centre of these things. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yes. Ant plant. So this is the tuba. Here you can see some of the holes where the ants come in and out. You can see the ants biting my hand. They're protecting their house. And up here, you can see the fruit. It's just full of biodiversity, it's amazing. There are so many things. I mean, someone like me can really get their rocks off in a scientific sense, yeah. The real highlight of the area, I mean, apart from the people and the, just the amazing place, and as we flew out, we saw so much really good forest there, but this is karst area, and there are amazing caves there. We're pretty excited because it's the first cave we're going to visit on this trip. And there's a high likelihood there'll be lots of bats in there. So we've now entered the cave entrance and uh, I've really got a bat dete detector here at the entrance so the bats can fly past where we record what species they are. Oh, I mean, it looks like a great cave for bats. But a lot of the caves are so far away and difficult to get to, I couldn't get to them. So I asked the locals, could they go and collect some? And they were really enthusiastic because bats are an important food resource for them. So they brought those back and it was a great collection. I think we got four or five species. And then I measured them, uh, took photos. This is a black pocket, semi come along, hold along the ground. And then within a twixt, they'd gone off and they were thrown on the fire and eaten. It was <laughs> quite amazing, really. 2K is it's such a beautiful area. I mean, so much more work needs to be done. I mean, I think we've only scratched the surface for looking at the biodiversity. Of, as a biologist, you, you can't have a better experience to go to a place like that where the people are really interested in what you're doing and quite keen to see what you're doing and be involved with it. You know, I mean, that's really great. One of the things that's really amazed me about being here is sitting down with the kids, the young kids, and talking to them about science. They, not just sucking up the information, but they're really, 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 really interested. This is a, a group of people who live here who are seriously trying to figure out 
How are they going to make the world in a world which is, which is really, really changing? And part of the way that we as scientists can help, we can provide education about the resources they have so they can make decisions about how they may manage those resources. And that makes them stronger as a, as a culture and stronger as a people. They can make sustainable decisions and it enables them to stay living here. As a biologist, you go into these areas, describing species is, I guess, is one thing, but in fact protecting whatever's there is the primary goal. This is an undisturbed, wondrous corner of the world. And by being undisturbed, that makes it different to everywhere else. Tuke is amazing for many reasons. Protecting that area is absolutely the most critical thing.